Welcome to Everyday Enlightenment. My guest today is the amazing Julia Cameron herself. Julia Cameron is the author of more than 35 books, including such best-selling works on the creative process as The Artist's Way, Walking in This World and Finding Water. Also a novelist, playwright, songwriter, and poet, she has multiple credits in theater, film, and television. Sedona Mago Retreat is so pleased that she is coming back again this year to put on a retreat called Creativity and Divinity. It will take place September 30th through October 2nd. Welcome, Julia. Welcome. It's good to be here. Oh, it's so nice to talk to you again this year. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Now, your book, The Artist's Way, has helped people discover and develop their creativity for nearly two decades, and it's really timeless. Why do you suppose that is? Well, I, I think that people have a perennial hunger to be creative. Uh, and the book came out 25 years ago, and many people started to use it. And now 4 million people have used it, and it keeps selling briskly. Uh, and I think that the reason it sells so briskly is that people still want to be creative. Well, I think you're right there. And how does your book and your teaching, how do you help people to nurture creativity? Well, I have a very simple toolkit which enables people to tap into their creativity and uh, to feel more powerful and less frightened. Uh, Because I think that fear is what keeps people from being creative. Uh, And my toolkit teaches people how to have the fear and do the creativity anyway. That's good. Good advice. And what else do you advise? Well, I I have a toolkit that is three basic tools. Uh, And the first tool is a tool I call Morning Pages. Uh, And it's three pages of longhand morning writing first thing in the morning. Uh, And if people will do Morning Pages... They will find themselves in touch with a benevolent power. I have often heard it described as the portal to faith, uh, and I think of it as a form of prayer and meditation. And as you give the universe an accurate picture of where precisely you are at, the universe is able to move toward helping you. That's very well described. And you don't try to control or think too much when you do this writing, am I correct? You just kind of let your thoughts flow? Yes. The morning pages are are free form. Uh, Some of them might be called stream of consciousness. It's as if you've taken a little teeny whisk broom to your consciousness and you're poking it into all the corners that are normally sort of hidden. Uh, and you're brushing them out, and it says, I forgot to buy kitty litter. Oh, right, right. I didn't call my sister back. Mm-hmm. The car has a funny knock in it, uh, and so it it ranges from the sublime to the ridiculous, <laughs> uh, and from the petty to the, to the deep. Right. Uh, and I think that people who do morning pages find that they have a spiritual awakening. Hmm. Do you still do morning pages yourself? Uh, Yes, I'm sitting here right now with a journal on my lap. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a longtime journaler, and I think it's it's great advice. And what's the second way in your toolkit that you encourage people to be creative? Well, the first tool is morning pages, and that's a daily tool. You write them every single day. The second tool is a once-weekly tool called an artist date. Uh, And it's as if with morning pages, you're notifying the universe of your likes and dislikes. Uh, And then when you do an artist date, which is a once a week solo expedition to do something that enchants or interests you. Yeah. How fun, too. What is, I bet that's a wonderful thing to look forward to. Well, I find that people are quite willing to undertake the work of morning pages they balked at the assigned fun of an artist state. Hmm. Are they just afraid it'll take too much time or they don't deserve it? What do you think it is? I think uh, that they are afraid of the intimacy that they will feel. When they take an artist date, they get in touch with their inner child. And it's a little bit like if parents are divorced, 
and the non-custodial parent takes the child out for a date once a week, mm -hmm. and that date is always fraught with emotion. You're taking your inner child out and listening to what it has to say, uh, and people are sometimes afraid of hearing what it has to say. Right. Might tell them they're unhappy and want to do something else, right? Yes, exactly. That's a very interesting tip there. And then what's the third thing in the toolkit? Well, this is a tool that I didn't know about when I wrote The Artist's Way. When I wrote The Artist's Way, I said, take, uh, do morning pages and take an artist date. Uh, and then in week 12 of the 12-week course, I said, P.S. Exercise. Uh, so I didn't realize how important the tool was until I had been teaching another 10 years. Uh, and then I moved the tool forward, and that tool is walking. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, take yourself out twice a week for a walk of 20 minutes or so, uh, and just listen to what bubbles up. Uh, I think that walking helps us to integrate the information and the intuitions and the hunches that we get from the other two tools. So you would suggest this be a solo walk? Yes, it's a solo walk. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, you can't take your dog. Oh, not even the dog can go. Yeah, that would be pretty distracting, I understand. If you take your dog, you're taking your dog's walk. Right. You know, so your dog is going, oh, look at that beautiful Rottweiler. Yes, yes. And you, oh. You're looking at the Rottweiler and you're missing the flowers. Mm-hmm, yeah. And then I wanted to ask you, Julia, creativity, it's such a hard thing to actually describe, or for me anyway. If somebody said, well, what is creativity? What would you say? So I would say creativity is a free-flowing contact with a power greater than ourselves. That's beautifully said. The retreat that you're going to be putting on at Sedona Mago Retreat is Creativity and Divinity, Dancing Partners, which I just love that. So they really are dancing partners, aren't they? Yes, they really are. And I find uh, that as I read prayers to people uh, and tell them this is what to expect, people begin to get excited. Uh, and they say, oh, I love those prayers. Mm -hmm. Well, we are all looking forward to you coming back again. It will be September 30th through October 2nd. And the retreat is called Creativity and Divinity Dancing Partners. So let's move on just a little bit because I know you have a new book called It's Never Too Late to Begin Again. Can you tell us a little about this book? The book It's Never Too Late to Begin Again is a book that I was actually asked to write for 25 years, and I kept saying no. I would say, tell them to work the artist's way, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I turned 68 myself, and I suddenly realized it's not good enough. We have many issues uh, that come about at retirement that are specific to retirement, uh, and they deserve to have a book of their own. So uh, It's Never Too Late to Begin Again is a toolkit for people who ha have recently retired uh, or who are just of a certain age and find themselves feeling stymied. And the toolkit says, you don't need to feel discouraged. Try this. Well, I love that because so many people have so much zest left and so many great ideas, but they may feel like, oh, I'm too old. And so this kind of puts an end to that kind of thinking, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that people frequently have dreams uh, that they're going to fulfill when they come to retirement. And then when they do come to retirement, they find themselves unable to fulfill their dreams. So this puts them in touch with the power that is latent within all of us uh, in order for us to be able to continue being creative long past uh, our due date. Our due date? I love that. <laughs> we don't expire like the bread on the shelves. That's right. That's good to know. That's really cute. 
I have a, a friend who is 93 years old, and he has the most creative mind. He writes poems every day, and he is just always full of vim and vinegar and so excited about his new projects. He's really a great role model for me. So there's no specific age when we're done being creative. No, I don't think there is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think that creativity is a power that flows through all of us. Uh, on a continual basis, uh, and that as we learn uh, a toolkit to tap into that power, uh, we begin to be able to actualize our dreams. Could this course, or this book, your new book, could it possibly help people to figure out what they might want to do next in Act 2, or perhaps it's even Act 3 for them? Because sometimes people just haven't quite figured out what it is they want to do. Well, the book definitely helps people figure out what it is they want to do. Uh, There's a tool in it uh, called the memoir, which is uh, a weekly writing exercise on the stages of your life. And as you write on the stages of your life, you begin to realize what dreams you had at those stages. Uh, And those begin to give you clues and cues Uh, as to what it is you would like to do next. That's so very interesting. So perhaps those dreams are still there and have kind of been buried through the years because you went a different direction? Yes, I think that's very accurate. I think I must pick up your book. I often say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do when I grow up next, and I'm no spring chicken myself. So that's very, very good advice. Before we say goodbye today, Julia, I thought I'd give you a chance to share your website in case people want to read about you. And again, if you could tell them where they could find your books, I imagine Amazon. Yes, Amazon or BarnesandNoble.com. And the website is JuliaCameronLive.com. It has information on about 40 books. So uh, people can read at their leisure and say, Oh, I think this is the one that applies. You've had a very busy and productive and creative life, that's for sure. And if you want to read about the retreat at Sedona Mago Retreat, please go to SedonaMagoRetreat.org. And I, for one, am so excited that you're coming back, and I thank you so much for being a guest today. Oh, you're very welcome. Bye-bye, Julia. Okay, bye-bye.